Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is War Dog Sec back with another video for you guys. Today's video, we are in Try Hack Me. This is Cybersecurity 101 Learning Path. This is Defensive Security Tooling Module, and this is the CyberChef The Basics Room. This room is an introductory to CyberChef, the Swiss Army knife for cybersecurity professionals. All right, hopefully, you all are having an awesome day today and ready to learn something. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Task one, introduction. CyberChef is a simple, intuitive web-based application designed to help with various cyber operation tasks within your browser. Think of it as Swiss Army knife for data, like having a toolbox of different tools designed to do a specific task. These tasks range from simple encodings like XOR or Base64 to complex operations like AES encryption or RSA decryption. CyberChef operates on recipes, a series of operations executed in order. All right, uh, learn the objectives, learn what CyberChef is, learn how to navigate the interface, understand common operations, learn how to create recipes and process the data. Room prerequisites, so they recommend going to take a look at these rooms here, at least knowing what they are talking about, so hashing basics and uh, cryptography basics. All right, so we want to proceed to task number two, accessing the tool. And it says there are two different ways to access and run CyberChef. Let's check out the two most convenient methods. So online, you can go to the online website, take to the web page for CyberChef. So if you just click on this link here, it'll take us there. But anyway, so as you can see over here on the side, you have various different recipes. So uh, that'll do various different things. If you hover over them, it'll tell you details about what they do. You can go in, you can search for things in here, like let's see, IP. If you want to extract information, right? So pretty much self-explanatory, you just drag it, drag whichever one over. So if I wanted to take a look at, like from base 64, just drag it over. And then you put your base 64 stuff in here, right? And then it'll decode it down here in the output, okay? You can also upload files and do all that stuff over here. All right, let's go ahead and continue on here. All right, so we have online, then we have also offline or local copy. So you can download it by going to this link here. Um, it says, this will work on both Windows and Linux platforms. As best practice, you should download the most stable version. I have access to CyberChef, and I'm ready to dive into it. We're good to go there. Task number three, navigating the interface. And as I've already gone over briefly and talked about these interfaces here, so you have operations, recipe, input, and output. Okay, operations is going to be where your recipes um, are. And then you can drag this over to the recipe um, space here. Type in your input, it's going to, to output into whatever you had put into this recipe area, all right? So let's see if they cover anything else in the details here. Okay, they have a lot of more information here. Operations area, this is a practical and comprehensive repository of all the diverse operations that CyberChef is equipped to perform. These operations are meticulously categorized, offering users convenient access to various capabilities. Users can utilize the search feature to locate specific operations quickly, enhancing their efficiency and productivity, which I showed you all how to do below or some operations you might use throughout your CyberChef journey. All right, yeah, so that's right. Operations, you're going to drag this over to this recipe area, and you're going to create a recipe by using these operations, right? So pretty much self-explanatory. And it's set to auto-bake, so as soon as you start dragging stuff over, it's going to start doing it, doing the baking or running those operations you have set in there. And you can look at this table here. All right, it says uh, from Morse code description, translate Morse code into uppercase, alphanumeric characters, examples, et cetera, et cetera, URL and code, two base 64, two hex, et cetera, et cetera. Alternatively, you can directly check how the operations work by hovering over a specific operation, which I've showed you all how to do that. Uh, the recipe area, this is considered as the heart of the tool. In this area, you can seamlessly select, arrange, and fine tune operations to suit your needs. This is where you take control, defining each operation's arguments and options precisely and purposefully. The recipe area is designed to, or is a designated space to select and arrange specific operations and then define their respective arguments and options to customize their behavior further. In the recipe area, you can drag the operations you want to use and specify arguments and options. That's right. So the features include the following, save recipe, load recipe, clear recipe. This can be found in highlighted areas. So those icons, as we saw over here in the, on the right area of these boxes, okay. Uh, let's see here. Bottom part of the 
image above is bake buttons, processes the data, the given recipe, I've explained that. Um, additionally, you can put the auto bake to automatically do that. Input area is pretty much self-explanatory. You're gonna input the information that you're trying to um, like decipher, decode or whatever. So it says you can paste, type, drag, you can upload files. Um, additionally, it has the following features, add a new input tab, open folder as input, open file as input, clear input and output, reset pane layouts, output area. The output area is a visual space that showcases the data processing results. Okay, uh, features include save output to file, copy raw output to clipboard, replace input with output, maximize output pane. All right, like I said, it's pretty much self-explanatory, easy to use, very user-friendly in my opinion. I've used it um, quite a few times. Question time. So pause the video and try to answer the questions yourself and then come back to the video. It says, in which area can you find from base 64? Well, that's gonna be in operations. Which area is considered the heart of the tool? That's gonna to be the recipe area. Okay, uh, task number four. Before anything else, hold your horses before even going to the actual thing. Let's have a quick overview of the thought process when using CyberChef. This process consists of four different steps. So step one, set a clear objective. Step two, put your data into the input area. Step three, select the operations you might want to use. Step four, check the output to see if it is the intended result. Hence, repeat the process either from step one or three. So you're going to cycle through a few times to get your designated results or whatever you're trying to see. Okay, so you might be doing like a CTF or something like that and you need to use something from CyberChef that um, can help you solve or capture a flag or what have you. It says, let's discuss each step further. Uh, setting a clear objective is essential. The step involves defining specific and achievable goals. It helps answer the question, what do you, I want to accomplish? Um, next, put your data in the input area and this step you use your data this is where you paste and upload the gibberish string that you found okay as always y'all be sure to pause the video and read through this all the way i'm just skim through it this third step is to select the operations you want to use this can be tricky if you are not familiar yet with what you are dealing with following our example we are still determining what to use to understand this gibberish string during our research we found the relevant information that this gibberish string might be using anything related to encryption uh, therefore we decided to use any operations under the encryption slash encoding category, including but not limited to the following here. Note that we can use a lot of operations in this category. Lastly, uh, check the output to see if you have the intended results. This begs the question, have we achieved our objective? All right, so looking at these steps here, it says step one, during a security investigation, I found a gibberish string. I want to know what hidden message it contains. If it has one, step two, paste or upload a gibberish string, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So pretty good process here just to go through to try to figure out a particular uh, solution using CyberChef's tools. All right, at what step do you determine what do I want to accomplish? And if we go back up here, we can see where they're talking about that. It'd be uh, step number one where you set your clear objective. So one's gonna be answered there. And now we're gonna get to some uh, practicing. Task number five, practice, practice, practice. So we want you to be as prepared as possible. Therefore, we will explore some of the tasks, most commonly used operation categories, recognizing which category uh, to utilize can enhance your ability to use the tool more um, efficiently and effectively. Extractors, the specific operations mentioned in the table below fall under the extractors category. So we have um, extract IPs, extract URLs, extract email addresses, uh, pretty much explanatory. Okay, it's gonna go through and extract these IP addresses and these emails out of whatever um, hidden message may um, appear or whatever's in that file, right? Or whatever you put into the input. Um, extract URLs, extracts uniform resource, locator, common known as URL, uh, date and time, the specific operations in the table below fall under date time categories if from Unix timestamp and to Unix timestamp. Once again, self-explanatory in the descriptions. A Unix timestamp is a 32-bit value representing the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970 to See the Unix epoch, okay, et cetera, et cetera. So it says to convert um, Friday, September 6, 20, yada, 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 into Unix timestamp, set the operations to Unix timestamp, et cetera, et cetera, and the result would be this here, okay. Um, data format, operations from base64, URL decode from base64, from base58 uh, to base62. 
All right, so I think you all are getting the gist of this, okay? B based on whatever category you have in there, and it's gonna be where these particular um, operations lie and that you can utilize as well. Um, it says operations such as those base 64, et cetera, et cetera, are known as base encoding. Space encodings takes binary data and transform it into a text base representation using a specific set of ASCII characters. And here's something of what it looks like here. They have a little table here that you can reference, I guess, of what they're saying. So decimal would be 65 and binary would be this. And then the symbol for ASCII would be this here. Okay. Uh, step one, convert to binary and merge manually. Based on our table above, um, T equals the binary um, would be that there, and then H, et cetera, et cetera. So if you go back and take a look here at these chart here, so if one look at T, you can see that the binary is going to be this, okay? Pretty straightforward. Step two, divide and convert the decimal manually. Um, so you how to do that here, all right? Uh, step three, convert to base 64 manually. Now we have the numbers from previous step, which are these here. Let's look for equivalent characters from our table below. The, this table represents a base 64 index to table. Now, obviously, we're going to use CyberChef or some other tool out there to do all this for us. So we're not going to be doing this by hand. Um, I don't think I've done this by hand since like college or something. So this is just explaining on how to um, convert binary and, and merge. Okay, um, divide and convert to decimal, and then I uh, convert to base 64. All right, so let's go ahead and skim through a lot of this here. Combine these characters, you should have the equivalent of THM and base 64 format. The answer would be um, this here. Well, isn't that amazing? You just convert a set of characters into base 64 manually. Now let's discuss the RLD code. This works by converting the percent um, encoded characters back to the raw values. For reference of these values, you can check the page here. Note that the default character set in HTML5 is UTF-8. Check the table below for a quick overview of what can be, uh, what you can typically see in a URL. So you have characters here, and you have the format in um, UTF-8, okay? Uh, practical exercise. Click on the Download Task Files button at the top of this to download the files. Once downloaded, uh, you can open the file, copy and paste the content into the input field, or use the open file as input feature in the upload file. Use these specific operations under the extractors category. For the first two questions, it's best to answer the questions first without using the hint. So go ahead and pause the video and try to go to these questions. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Be sure to hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. Once you subscribe, be sure to hit that notification bell. All right, so you know every time I post a new video. As you can see here, most people that view my videos, view my channel, are not subscribed. Now, if you do subscribe, it will help me get into the YouTube algorithm so that we can continue to grow our glorious community here. As always, thank you all for taking the time to watch. Have a nice day and enjoy the video. Let's take a look here. What is the hidden email address? So we want to extract that information. So extract email addresses, drag this over and hidden at hotmail.com appears to be what we are looking for here. Plug this in. What is the hidden IP? that ends in dot .232. So we're gonna do something similar here. Extract IP addresses. And first, let's get rid of this. Let's crawl this out. There we go. And this is the IP we're looking for here. Okay. Um, it says, what or which domain address starts with the letter T? All right, so once again, let's clear our recipe, crawl this out and extract domains. All right, and let's try hacking.com is what we are looking for here. See, this is pretty straightforward um, process to use. What is the binary value of the decimal number 78? So let's go ahead and clear this out. And we want to convert this to binary. So let's see here. So from decimal and then to binary. Okay. Let's go ahead and clear this out because we don't need this anymore. So we want to put in 78 and there's our answer there. Okay. 
what is the URL encoded value of this here? So once again, I'm going to copy this over and plug it into the input field like that, clear our recipe out, and then we're going to find the particular operations that we'll utilize here. So we need to, we need URL encode, All right? So drag it over. Okay, and there we go. So make sure to check mark, uh, check mark that box there to encode all special characters. And this is task number six, your first official cook. This task allows us to apply what we learned from the previous task. We'll utilize CyberChef's areas and its features to answer questions being asked. Now this is the time that you truly shine. You're going uh, for your first cook ever ready. Let's get our hands dirty. Try to answer the questions without looking at the hints, okay? If you get stuck, go back and look at the hands. So go through, answer these questions, come back to the video, and then we will take a look. Okay, so it says using the file you downloaded in task five, which IP address ends with 10. Now I went ahead and just opened the file inside of here and once again, extract IP address. You can see that it's gonna be this one here, 10.10.2.10. And that's gonna be our answer for that one. So what is the base 64 encoded value for the string here? So let's go ahead and find that again. Let's clear out our recipe, clear all this out. And we want to convert this to base 64, so to base 64, drag it over. Okay, and that should be our answer here. What is the URL decoded value? For this, all right, so we're going to copy this and then we're going to decode it. Clear all this stuff out of here. And then we are going to be looking for URL decode. There we go. And what is the date time string for the Unix timestamp here? So to do this one, we need to look for, let's see, Unix 2. So from timestamp, it's probably gonna be the one we're going to need. First, let's clear all this stuff out of here. So from Unix timestamp, plug it in there, and there's our answer there. See how this works? What is the base 85 decoded string value for this here? Once again, we're just going to follow the same steps. All right, so we're going to find base 85. This is fun. All right, so we're done with that. And task number seven, we're going to close out this video. In this room, we discuss how CyberChef is a powerful tool for handling various data transformations and decoding tasks, whether you need it to work with base 64, binary, or URLs. This Digital Wizards Kitchen provides a visual interface that makes data manipulation intuitive and straightforward. As y'all saw there, we used various different aspects of CyberChef. We used various different operations. We combine those operations into, into um, recipes and we use those recipes to help us decode various different items in here or extract information from files or other um, information that we pasted into the inputs area here. Okay, we're pretty much done. I will have CyberChef the Swiss Army knife of cybersecurity ready for uh, my upcoming journey. So that is it. If you wanna learn more about CyberChef, feel free to do that. Like I said, you may come across this when you're doing like CTFs a lot of time. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you later. Have a nice day.